Hey, good day, guys. Uh, thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me as we're going to talk about your book from 2010, Innovative Performance Support. But before we launch into that, uh, could we start with some introductions and a brief uh, background in L&D? And Khan, why don't you start for us? Okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of an old guy here. I, in 1984, I finished graduate school and I with a PhD in instructional psychology and technology and have been practicing in the real world ever since. So uh, I, I had the honor in 1990 to become acquainted with Bob Mosier and uh, we became uh, great friends and colleagues. And that led us to uh, ultimately establishing Apply Synergies and uh, the, the dream that I had for many years to be able to work in tandem with Bob as we championed the cause of the five moments of need and all that we're doing, including performance support, of course, that's at the heart of it all. Yes, thank you. Bob? Yeah, well, I, I, I found my way here in a similar pattern, although I went uh, a little lower on the educational poll with elementary kids. I was an elementary school teacher out of my pedigree and got my advanced degree in, in, the, in uh, adult learning and technology at the time they called it. Um, but I spent the last uh, 30 plus years since I did left public education in the corporate sector, so to speak, and in a whole bunch of roles from being a learning leader within a company to providing services, even a product at one time. And in the last uh, seven years, like Khan said, I've been blessed enough to work with this gentleman because I stumbled into what we're going to talk about today. Um, and, and, and really at the time, didn't see any, any other way to do it than, than go off on our own. So we've been at this for quite a bit. Cool. Thank you so much for that. Now let's shift gears here uh, and to your book. To start off, my three-part question is, who did you write it for? Why did you write it? And what do you hope the takeaways are for the readers? Who wants to start? Well, I'll, I'll jump into the, and I'm gonna reorder them if you don't mind, Guy, because, sure. because for us, it was, it was, why did, it was, it was kind of why did we write it um, for whom, right? And, 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 you know, performance support for too many people is, is a job aid. You know, it's, it's an afterthought. It's an add-on. It's a, you know, if, if we have time after we finish our whatever we're designing, we'll, we'll make sure they have something, a good takeaway. Well, my goodness, that has, it undersells the discipline, which it is, by the way, in, in a remarkable way. So the driver for us was to elevate the conversation and not just around performance support as a discipline, but what, what has broadened into workflow learning and, and a performance mindset that you and I've talked about before uh, in a big way. And so it's for those IDs out there that are a bit um, struggling with the journey between a, a training to performance mindset, um, how they can get there. It's a pr fairly pragmatic book on stepping people through uh, with a lot of good examples from um, folks we've been fortunate to know along the journey. Um, and so that was really the driver for me and for, for doing it. Con? Well, what Bob said there, you, you know, um, you can't face training without asking the question, so what, what, what's training's done? What, what do we do? And the five moments of need, you know, take us to the moment of apply and change and solve, all of which happens in the flow of work. So you can't solve the challenge of uh, learning at all five moments of need without stepping into the workflow. And the way to do that is with the discipline of performance support coupled with learning. It's not in lieu of learning. It's not in place of learning. It's actually learning at all five moments of need. We learn by doing, right? We learn through experience as well as through those more formal ways that, that we've become so good at for so many years. Well, thanks. Now let's shift right into the book. Uh, who wants to lead us through uh, an overview of the sections and chapters of the book here and uh, orient our audience to what it's all about? Well, Bob and I will take turns. So let, let me start. So chapter one of the book just makes the case for uh, performance support. You know, uh, why we need, the very reason why you asked the question starting off, uh, why do we need to focus on performance support? And, and with each of these chapters, we invited someone to, uh, you know, a, a, a key thinker and leader in the field to add some insight. So in this chapter, we had Tim Clark, who Bob and I worked with in a, a research paper and a benchmarking effort 
the last of the a year and a half on learning at the speed of change? This chapter one is all about the change involved guy. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest things that hits everyone in the face when they try this is this isn't just adding another tool to the toolkit or buying a technology. It is a, if you do this well, it is a true change initiative. Chapter two goes into, and I think, and, and, and we want to get to this right away, that we didn't want people to think our perf innovative performance support book was just about performance support. <laughs> because what we've learned through the five moments is that there are five moments, two of them involve and prior best served through training. And so where does performance support fit in that entire journey? How does it complement uh, all that we do in blending our learning, uh, training included. And, and again, in this case, we invited a, just a remarkable learning leader now with Amazon, Dr. Frank Wynn. Um, and I love it, is, is, instructional, is instructional design dead is his particular addition to that part. Yeah, then chapter three had to do with focusing in on the workflow process and aligning everything with that and, and how process is the key here for, for everything. So the way you hold all five moments together is you step into the flow of work and you align learning and performance support with that flow of work. Very important chapter process that we, we call it the backbone to all that we do. Chapter four is beginning at the moment of apply, which is one of the five moments. And, and Guy, you and I talked about this before. This is, if people don't make, we made the mistake of, of numbering the five moments at one time. <laughs> And numbers imply two things, um, order and priority. And of course, we had numbers one and two, the moments of new and more, which are training, frankly, typically, right? The reality is we've learned over the journey that uh, we made a mistake in doing that because the number one need is apply. And so if we don't shift to apply as, as our focus in our design and our mindset, in all the stakeholders we, we interact with and understand what, a, what a apply um, deliverables can truly look like, then you don't make the shift. You still build training first, you don't get to apply in time, and you don't understand the power of the tools that are built there. Chapter five is about brokering uh, all of the assets. We, we've yet to walk into an organization that didn't have performance support assets scattered everywhere, as well as learning assets scattered everywhere. The, the challenge that Gloria Geary saw in, in uh, in 1990 was that they're scattered and they need to be brokered or, or brought together in some orchestrated way. And so this chapter focuses on that, on, on the, the magic of taking all the things that you have and pulling them together in a systematic way. Uh, we call it the performance support pyramid, but providing an orchestrated way of, of doing that. Chapter six is the strength of social learning. We, we can't address the pyramid, as Khan just mentioned, without understanding that, particularly, my gosh, we wrote this pre-pandemic, but look at the world we're in now, you know, with, with virtual stuff and then Teams as a backbone and Slack and all, these things didn't exist when we wrote this book. But the, rea the, the scary thing we saw, Guy, though, it, out of folks is, is, which we do in our industry all too much, is we run at the shiny penny. And everyone said, well, let's just put them in social groups and put them on a, on a Slack you know, chat environment, and that'll be performance support. It's not, it's not. And, and performance support at its heart is an, is an enabling methodology. It's an, it's an, meaning that the learner owns their learning, that, that the learner doesn't, we, you know, they should clearly seek out SMEs and, 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 and peers. We're not saying they shouldn't do that. But in the end, the organization wants learners to stand self-reliant. They, they don't want to build dependent workers that are in social rooms all day. <laughs> Um, so how do you balance that right? Where does it fit? That was, that's chapter six. Chapter seven uh, addresses a critical uh, area that uh, wasn't being thought about and, uh, as organizations step into the world of performance support. And that is, how do you keep everything current and vibrant? You know, uh, people will choose whether or not they use performance support. And the minute that, uh, uh, when, we, when we step into the discipline of performance support, we leave the comfort of our home, our learning and training home, and we step into the workflow on the turf of the business. So you've got to work with the business to keep it current. And we, we have never been faced with the challenge of keeping something that is supporting real time work uh, in the way you need to. And so this was about content management and, and governance and all that's involved 
in, in keeping things current and vibrant and meaningful. And last, to put a bow around it, we share, although this is kind of scattered throughout the book, we have a, a chapter dedicated to implementation of it. What, you know, we, get, we really roll up our sleeves and get into the nuts and bolts because we got to do it. You know, it has to have an Addy model <laughs> right to it somewhere. Um, we have something equivalent to that we share in the book, but it, it really is the, the, the so the more examples and how do you really roll up your sleeves, get started and implement uh, in the journey as you go. That's the book. Well, thank you so much for that overview. So what can you tell us about, uh, where can the audience find this? Uh, where's it available and uh, uh, where would you point them to? Go ahead, Bob. Uh, it, you know, Amazon's your best, frankly. You know, the mo more common places, that's where we order ours through. The, you know, we, the, the publisher with McGraw Hill that we uh, published through at one time offered the book, frankly, as well. But I go to the normal chapters where you find things, Amazon being the best. Oh, excellent. All can right. I can I just tell you that, sure. that that a lot has happened since this book was published. We've learned a lot of things, and so we do have um, uh, performance support around all that we're doing uh, and all that is in that book. And so, you know, uh, Bob and I and and our team have worked at at sharing out through uh, our website you know, information that we've learned since. Yeah, there's a number of free assets, guys, since that book. We've been asked to do a version since, but you know, life is life. And, and as you know, more than anyone, my friend, just firing up another book is, Hercu <laughs> is Herculean, right? But, uh, but, in, in, but in light of that, yes, we have kept the dialogue, the blog, the podcast and stuff up in it. And we refer back to the book quite a bit. If you go to the Five Moments of Need website, it's free resources. It's all up there to, to, to take the book into, the, into where we stand today. Well, excellent. So is there is there not another book coming from you two or what? <laughs> Con? Yeah. Yeah. We're working on one this year, a, a digital book on workflow learning. And then uh, next year, we're going to uh, take on uh, a full fledged uh, reworking of this book into what it what it should have always been. Yeah. So the digital book will be out in late March, April. Um, but, and, and that will have a lot of references, videos, and things as digital books can do <clears throat> on specifically workflow learning, which is really, Guy, what, what in our opinion, performance support as a discipline has matured into. Performance support's a little off-putting, to be honest, and, and we spent too much time explaining what that meant to people, and, 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 and for L&D folks, that's great, but when you sit in front of someone you're trying to get to pay you or, or want this thing instead of five days of training, we really found workflow learning, which will be the shift in the book and frankly, the title to be really where the sweet spot is now. I'm looking forward to uh, checking all of this out as it uh, rolls out. Um, so uh, thank you for doing this uh, for me today. And uh, I'm looking forward, as I said, to uh, your future endeavors and, we'll, and I'll put in the show notes on the YouTube video uh, links that uh, our audience can uh, follow up with. Uh, but thank you for your time today and uh, stay safe. You as thank well, you. Guy. Thanks for all you do, my friend. Appreciate the opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye now. <laughs>